I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading Luke chapter 18, and let's focus on verses 9 through 14. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. He said two men went up to the temple complex to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. And the Pharisee took his stand and was praying like this, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Why, I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of everything I get. But the tax collector standing afar off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but kept striking his chest and saying, God, turn your wrath from me, a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you that this one went down to his house justified rather than the other, because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Once again, Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14. Today's passage teaches a sobering message. Our righteousness is not based on how well we fare against other men. Rather, how well we measure up to God's standard. Now, I understand why the self-righteous prefer to justify themselves against the righteous efforts of other men, because when we gaze into the mirror of God's standard, well, then we despise our reflections. And when we come closer to the holiness of God, well, then our egos have to shrink and shiver. But there is good news in the midst of this dilemma. Jesus has fulfilled the Torah or the law's requirements on our behalf. Look at what the Bible says here. He says, what the law could not do because it was limited by the flesh, God did. The Lord condemns sin in the flesh by sending His own Son in the flesh like ours under sin's dominion and as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be accomplished in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. You see, righteousness is only obtained by meeting the law's requirements, which is impossible for us by our own effort. And that is the great human dilemma, isn't it? That we need something which is impossible for ourselves to obtain. Well, then enter the Messiah, the Anointed One, Jesus, accomplished for us, that which is impossible for men. And He fulfilled the Torah's requirements on our behalf. By His grace, He offers that atonement to us free of charge, if we would by faith turn from our sin and receive Him. Consider what it says here in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For it is by grace that we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, but it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, the great mystery of the Old Testament is that salvation has always been by grace through faith, never through works. So why was the tax collector justified in the Lord's sight and the Pharisee shown as an object of rebuke? Well, because the tax collector humbled himself. He confessed his sin and he believed the word of the Lord that God, by His grace, would forgive him. A humble attitude of worship is what the Lord requires of us. Salvation is a function of God's grace, so that when the object of our faith is the Messiah, Jesus, and His righteous atoning work, well then God considers our faith in Jesus' righteousness as if we were righteous. Things to think about. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.